I'm Dr. Jim Drakeley, University of Illinois. And I'm uh, Phil Cardoso, an associate professor at the University of Illinois. And we just uh, have a link to provide on a paper, on a symposium review that we have on nutrition, nutrition strategies for improved health, production, and fertility during the transition period at the Journal of uh, Dairy Science. So I've been working in this area ever since my time in graduate school, which is a long time ago now. Um, but my interest at first was more on the health aspects from metabolic disorders uh, in particular. And so um, the, the health aspect, difficult calvings, uh, metabolic disorders that happen shortly after, that was always a big interest. And um, then it became clear that, that this time of calving and whether the cows get diseases or not is, is really important for high milk production or allowing the cow to get off to a, a good start and, and reach towards her genetic potential for milk. And then as, as time went on, it became clear that cows that had these turbulent transitions also were not, uh, not having good reproductive success. So, you know, the idea is that all three of these areas are intimately related and intertwined and just, just kind of naturally evolved. And I think if it, it became clear and people uh, as herds expanded and management became more intensive, I think people realized that too in the field that that uh, the transition period was was probably the most critical time for getting a cow off to a, a decent start and having a uh, a good lactation and also reproductive success. On the first one, on the control energy diet, um, how, how did that come about? And 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 if you could say one question or one thing that I think we tried to talk about it in the paper, but maybe that's not very clear and you'd like to expand on? Yeah. I think the, the original way that I got started on, on that idea was a, an experiment that we did um, relatively recently after I joined the faculty back in the early 1990s. Um, we, we looked at a, a way to add body condition score during the dry period to cows that were thin going in. And at that time, it was more, that was more of a problem that people felt like cows were, were too thin and not having enough body reserves to, to go into the next lactation. So we looked at a, an experiment, this was with Dave Grum, one of my first PhD students, um, two diets to try to add body condition score. So higher energy, one of those was with, mostly with fat, and the other way was with higher concentrates, more corn silage. And the interesting thing in that experiment is that when we fed that high fat diet, which was also very low in, in uh, uh, starch, non-fiber non carbohydrates, uh, those cows didn't have any uh, fat accumulation in the liver after calving, and lower NEFA, lower, lower ketones and so on. So that was really surprising. And <clears throat> we first thought it was maybe something to do with the high fat diet, but then we followed up and, and tried to separate those two into um, the energy intake versus whether it was fat or carbohydrate. And it was really the total energy intake that was the, the, the key factor there. And so that was kind of the, um, the, the start of the idea of the control energy diets. There were guys that were doing this in the field too, like Gordy Jones and, and uh, uh, others, and, and everybody thought they were a little bit crazy to be doing that because it was going against the dogma of the time, which was we had to, had to push dry matter intake and, and uh, um, higher starch diets to try to prepare cows for lactation and so on. So that was the way it got started. And, and I think the, you know, as, as we've learned more, it's become more, more successful and, and easily implemented in the field. I, I think it's, it's been pretty widely adopted, at least um, parts of it, and whether in the entire dry period or at least in the, the far off dry period. What would you say is one of the big questions that you have or main concerns uh, when we are talking about this strategy? I think one of the, the areas that's still kind of unclear is, is what the diets should look like because 
we, we've been using the energy net energy density and that's uh, it's kind of dependent on the system that you use to calculate that and it'd be nice if we knew um, you know we needed a certain percent of NDF and a certain percent of starch and a certain percent of soluble fiber and, and all these things to define it a bit more chemically than than just using the the net energy so if people get hung up on you know what it should it be 1.34 megacals per kilo or should it be uh, you know 1.36 <laughs> so I think there's a lot of, of uncertainty and and uh, uh, concern about hitting that right energy level and it's, it's kind of uh, I think in practice it's easier than that you just you kind of formulate for a target and if your cows are are responding then you've got it right yeah and I remember as your PhD student then we were able to put together the that um, meta-analysis approach or, you know, include more cows and then have some assessment on yeah. production and, and also milk. Uh, yeah. And that was very interesting as well. You did a nice job on that, putting together all those studies and it really clearly showed some of the things that we'd been, um, that, that seemed like we were seeing in individual studies, but the reduction in metabolic problems and, and a slight improvement in the uh, in reproduction as measured by days to pregnancy. Um, so that was a, a really good summary of meta-analysis of, of what we had done to that date. So I think that that's gone on to really, really strengthen the, the argument. Yeah, and I think, I mean, there is still papers to come from that uh, dissertation, but uh, I think some of the chapters uh, when we talk, especially like you mentioned about diseases, uh, you kind of touched that in a paper with uh, Nicole, didn't you? And I think uh, Eve Boyclair, is that right? Yeah. yeah, Eve Boyclair was involved because he wanted to look at leptin. So he measured leptin and, and insulin for us in that experiment. Um, so we had we had the chance there, in a, in again, just in a single experiment to kind of look at the some of the health aspects and the, the metabolic indicators of of health. So that was that's that was a key study as well. Uh, Arnulfo, another PhD student, he worked trying to understand better the point that you were making about hey, we are talking about the energy, but we don't really know where is it coming from, or you know this NDF versus just the lower energy. And I remember that trial feeding a normal, let's call high energy or a corn silage based diet, another uh straw based diet or control energy diet and then the same uh high high energy or corn silage diet at 80 percent of the requirement of the cows to try to separate a little bit the fiber effect yeah. and the energy itself right another experiment that um uh i hope we're going to have published here before too much longer but uh another part of the the story yeah. So what, I'll turn it back on you. What questions do you get in the field when you're talking about controlled energy concepts? Yeah. So, so I think was, I think the number one, uh, it's about uh, that diet not being consumed in, in a normal way, and I think uh, in an adequate way. So I think they calculate something uh, lower in energy. Mm -hmm. But then when you go to the farm, there are some characteristics of that herd or the facilities that do not allow for the cows to consume that. And, and it can go from the dry matter of the TMR, it's too dry and cows are not consuming. So it's not just the energy, they're not consuming anything. Right. So, but right. it gets blamed on the technique, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's dry matter sometimes, even the dry matter is okay let's say 48 50 percent but then it's summer and that tmr gets exposed to the sun the whole day yeah. uh, so you know it gets dry pretty quick uh if you you know you know that but you know usually yeah. these diets we are adding uh a little bit of water right to bring that total dry matter right. uh, so just the dry matter itself and then the um physical characteristics of that tmr on pretty much sorting yeah. uh, and there's a pretty nice research. I think it came last year in the Journal of Dairy Science from uh, 
Travers, uh, Trevor DeVries group at Guelph talking about a long and a small particle size for that yeah. wheat straw yeah. and how that impact. And if you think about it, the long straw, I think was like a, an inch or a little bit more, inch and a half. The other one was kind of less than an inch. So really chopped, even the long one, you know, and sometimes you can see like big particles yeah. mixed to those cows. So, uh, so that's something that we have research on how to, that we have research now on actually how important it is to chop that straw or that fiber being used to dilute yeah. the energy uh, um, smaller uh, in an adequate size, right? Where kind of uh, cows can eat without sorting. Right. But, uh, but I think there is some confusion, uh, not confusion, but uh, especially in the West where, you know, kind of uh, diets in California where they have ability to use a lot of fiber or that NDF, it's coming for very uh, soluble fiber. Right. Uh, or even with some extra uh, sugar per se, right, because of that. Uh, I think they end up having a control energy diet, but with a little bit more energy, but in a different source. And those right. cows perform well, even though, so they would say, no, we don't do control energy diet, but perhaps they are doing the concept that they don't have the rapid starch digestible yeah. main source of energy, but they have other sources that play around perhaps with a better um, match with protein degradation and rumen uh, uh, functioning. Yeah. But, but, but that's totally kind of, um, you know, hypothesis. I, I don't know. Yeah. No, I think that's a great point. And I, I, I still think that it's the high starch that we're talking about in, in the systems that we've looked at that's probably the culprit. And as you say, when you get into more digestible fiber and soluble fiber and, and uh, sugars, we're probably dealing with a little bit type, different type of energy that maybe is not as potentially dangerous. I think mm -hmm. one, other, one other question that I get or an area of confusion is people um, uh, get upset or, or, or concerned about the low dry matter. So the idea of higher intake is so ingrained in people's thinking that if the cows only eat um, uh, 12 kilos a day and they're used to them eating 13 and a half or something then they worry about that and actually that's what we're trying to do because the the diet itself is controlling that that total energy intake so i always have to, to try to get people to remember that the total energy intake is is dependent on two things it's dependent on the dry matter intake but it's also then dependent on energy density of the diet. And if you change one of those, the other is gonna change. And so we have to be balancing those two uh, all the time to look at what is the total energy intake in megacalories per day by the cow. So I, I think that people still get hung up on the, the idea that your cows are not eating enough when actually they're eating, you know, right what we're formulating them to eat.